Welcome back to the channel friends, in today's video we should be able to go to our variable products, click this button that we have here and we should be able to choose the different items we want to have on our plate. So let's do that. In our previous video we were able to add a model so that when we click this little button here we're able to see this pop-up or what you call a model showing up whenever we are on our variable products. So if you go to the single products we don't have that, we just have this button that clicks and you add everything inside the mini cart. So what we're going to do is have our variable products so that when you click this model you should be able to see the particular variables that you have from your admin area showing up in that model and the variables that I'm talking about are these particular attributes that we have here, the sizes and the accompaniments showing the different variations of the different pizzas that we have. For example this margarita pizza should be able to show us all the small pepperoni, the small with olives and give us all those options for us to just choose from. Remember there is always good information in the description down below this video and you can subscribe to the channel if you think you get value every other video that comes out and turn on the notification bell to remind you of whenever new videos are out. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoy the content and you think you've got value for it. Let's go back to this particular development area and we shall dive inside the code that we have here. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is go to our WooCommerce and then go to our loop and we shall look at the add to cut loop because that's where we're having this model being triggered. And the first thing that I'm going to do is try to restructure all of this so that we are able to pass in our PHP much much easier. So I'm going to escape this PHP here and then I'll open the PHP here, clean out the semicolon, after escaping the PHP and opening it here, we need to add our closing and opening tags in the PHP variables that we have here so that we can still have that dynamic data showing up. So I'm going to get this PHP tag that we have here and I'm going to keep adding it in these locations where we had this kind of idea. So I'm going to look for all these places, open PHP there, and then I'm going to look for these ends. Of course the first thing that I need to do is add a semicolon, then close the PHP so that it works properly. Now all that is left is to select these pieces with our product and then we are going to add echo to them so that we are having that particular information echoed straight into our HTML. So when I come back to the front end here and reload this, we shall go to pizza and you're going to see that when we click this we have our model showing up. Now that was necessary for me because I'm going to now add a number of PHP lines in here that we need to be able to showcase. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to open PHP again and since we already have this global of product here we don't need to add it in here. Now the way we get our variables from our admin area is by simply using a couple of lines of code. So we are going to just say vadump and inside this vadump we're going to use our product object that we do have and this object is of a class, it uses the WC product class and on that class it has particular methods, for example we can get default attributes and since this is a method we are going to just pass this in. So let's go back here, reload and we have an error, we have an unexpected semicolon and that's because in the vadump I don't need to pass that semicolon, I just need to come back here, reload and when we do our pizza, click this, we are able to see that we are now actually getting the variables that we have. We have the small size and we also have the accompaniments which is giving us the pepperoni. Now this code that I put in gives us only the default attributes, meaning that I am going inside this barbecue steak pizza in the admin 
if I go inside the barbecue steak pizza, I'll go to products, go to barbecue, and then when I go down to the variations, you're going to see it's only giving us this default, the small and pepperoni, which is good, but we need to have all these other items so that we can use radio buttons or select or drop downs, whatever you want to call it, on our area here so that a customer can make a preference of their choice. Now what we are going to do is we are going to look through the different attributes that we do have and we are going to get back that information. So let's go back into our code, we've been able to get our product defaults, so I'm just going to save this and say let this be our default attributes, I'll save this inside uh, a variable, and now what we're going to do is we're going to get a for each, we're going to get a for each loop and we're going to be looping through all the available variations. So what I'm going to do is duplicate what we have this, uh, what we have here, and I'm going to call it available attributes, and I'm going to get this value and say for all the available attributes that we do have, let us loop through each one of them and we're going to say as a variation values. So we're going to be getting those as variation values down here. Now what I can do is I can just get this right here, let me var dump it so that you can be able to see from step to step what we are getting. The thing that we need to do is we'll have to get a for each statement here, because we're getting back arrays of data, and we're going to do some crazy things inside here. So for each, and inside that for each statement, we're going to get the variation values, and for each one of those variation values that we are getting, we need to get the attribute itself. So we'll get attribute, and we're going to say for each one of those as a key, and for each key we are going to use our arrow function, and we're going to say let us get the attribute from each one of those. So I'll just get this var dump here, move it up, let me see what I get in each one of those attribute values. So I'll copy this, paste it here, and I can see I made an error when I was duplicating this, I made the same variable, it's supposed to be get available variations, so I'm going to get this and change to variations. Now we can var dump to, get, to see what we get in both instances, I'll first move this up here so that we can see the variable attributes that we are getting, I'll save this, and then at the next stage I'm also going to var dump something different, but let me first comment this out and let's see what we get from the variable attributes. I'll come back here, I'll reload, go to pizza, click this icon and you'll see that we have an array of data. Now inside this array we have a number of things, so we're going to look through this array, look through this array and get to the attributes that we have here, and we're going to see that inside this array of attributes we have attribute sizes and we have attributes accompaniments. So when we come back to our code, remember this is giving us the whole array that we are getting. Now we loop through this array that we get, and then we shall be able to get the variation attributes that we have. So these are the available attributes that we have here, when we loop through, we get these attributes that we are chaining here, you can see I'm looping through each one of those values, I'm getting the attributes from that, and I'm saying let each one of those be an attribute value, so the thing that we are tapping from here is this attribute sizes and attributes accompaniments, so for each one of those attributes value, what we are going to do is we're going to strip off this word called attributes, underscore, we're going to strip that off, and the way we do that is we use the string replace function of PHP to do that, so inside that string replace it's going to expect a number of things inside it, so in the string replace we're going to pass in 
of course, we want to remove the word attribute underscore. After removing it, we don't want to give it anything, so we we'll leave that empty, and we need to pass that as key because this is the thing that's giving us the information we need. This is the key of that particular loop, and it's giving us the information that we need. So we pass it in here. Now, what are we going to get after this? At that point, we're going to get what we call the attribute name. So we'll save this as a variable. Now, if you want, you can still get the attribute name here, and then you can var dump and see what you're getting. So if I come back here and reload, go to pizza and click this, you're going to see that we're going to have all these different things that we are looping through, and we have sizes here, we have accompaniments there, we have sizes again, we have accompaniments here, but we don't have that word attribute on each one of those ends. Okay, so that's good. Step one accomplished. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say if that attribute name, so we use this if statement, we're going to say if that attribute name is equal to, we'll use two equal signs, and say if it is equal to what we call the target head attribute, now you're going to see that now we're introducing another variable that we didn't have here. So I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to go all the way up to where we have the global here, and I'm going to say if the targeted attribute is equal to sizes, I'll tap that as a semicolon, if it's equal to sizes at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to say get the default value. So we're going to get the default value, which is, so the default value that we want to get is equal to the product, and remember that's a class that has a number of methods, so we're going to get the get variation default attribute method, and inside that we're going to pass in the attribute name, so we get this attribute name from our if statement, and then we pass it in here. So I'll save that, and we're going to var dump to see what we're getting here, so I'll get the default value, copy this, put this in here, I'll uncomment this, let's see if we are getting the sizes that we have here. So I'll go back, reload this, come back to pizza, I see we've broken something, let's go back and see what's happening, and we have a typo here, this method should be attribute, so I'll save this, come back, reload, go to our pizza, it's now not broken, when I click this, you'll see that we are now having small, 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 those are four, and then if we go here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, they're all small that we are getting here. So that is a good indicator, we're now going to get all the small items. After getting this default value, we're now going to say inside here, if our default value that we get here, which is small for now, if we get that default value and we say it is equal to the attribute value which we got here. So if it is equal to the attribute value, I'm going to copy this, paste this here, then we are going to set all the related variation IDs and make an array of them. So we're going to say, let's get the variation IDs, and we're going to say that's going to equal to the variation values, and inside those variation values we're going to just attach the variation id. So we're just going to make an array of that, and then of course this should be an array, so I'm going to set these variation ids here as an array, I'll copy it and var dump it at the end of the day so that we can see what's happening, but we need to set this way earlier, like we did with the sizes. We need to set it here, variation IDs, and say it is equal to an empty array, 
so that we don't get an error at the end of the day. When I come back here and save this, come to our front end, reload, go to pizza here and click this, you're going to see that we have all these different things showing up. So we have the integer of 24, and on 24 now we are chaining on 25, and now we have chained on 26, and so on. You're going to see we have 26 there, 26 showing up, and we have all the different IDs that we need to have our different variations. Now with those IDs, we can be able to go and get the different products using these variation IDs that we have here. So what I'm going to do is come out of this for loop, of course I'll comment out this var dump so that it doesn't give us other messages showing us the dump, and we're going to say if, now just to make sure everything is running right, we don't want to assume that we have variation IDs, Let's assume our shop was broken and we don't have variation IDs. So we're going to say if the count, if we count the variation IDs and say if it is greater than zero, meaning if we have variation IDs in our array, then we should be able to do a for each, and inside that for each we're going to be able to do our particular query of the product. So for each of those variation IDs, as, as a variation ID, I'm going to say the first variation that I'll get is going to equal to the WC, and I'll use this method, WC get product, which will help me get the product, and I can pass in the variation ID in here so that we can be able to use this. So I'll copy this and then pass in this variation ID. I am just going to var dump that so that you can see what we are getting, so let's get the variation, by saving that come back to the front end, reload, come to pizza, click this, and you're going to see that now we're getting the different variations, we have the barbecue pizza of course here, and it has all the different items and things attached to it, and when we scroll over and over and over again, we have it also showing up, we have the small olives, as much as we had the small pepperoni showing up inside here. So what we're going to do is get the different names of these and then put them inside selects. So since we have each one of those variations, we can be able to get the variation attributes from that, so I'll duplicate this and we're going to say what we want to get is the variation attribute, so if we're getting the variation attribute, all we need to do is get this variation that we have here, I'll copy this and I'll say let's get that variation, and this has on it a method that's called get variation. get variation attributes. I'll save this, I'll first copy this, save this, let's see what we get as a variation attribute, I'll reload this, come back to pizza, click this, and you'll see that we have small pepperoni, we have small olives, we have small cheese, which we automatically had before here, so we have small pepperoni, small olives, small cheese, and we have that showing, we have medium pepperoni and all these, we shall be able to get all those if we want to get them. So I'm going to come back here, and then of course since we have this, we are able to dump them in particular HTML that we want to use. But before we do that, I also want to be able to get the variation price, so I'm going to get this variation, and I'm going to say let's get the price, and of course I want to make it a little bit obvious, I would say variation price, the variation price is going to be equal to the variation, and the method that we're looking for there is, the method is get price. So on that variation we want to get price, and that's the method we want to use, I'll copy this variation price from here, put it here, save this, 
and then come back to the front end, go to this reload, what we have here, I'll come to pizza, click on this, and you're going to see that we have this price of 6.0, we have 6.2, and we have 6.5, just like we did in this particular area. So 6.10, 6.2, then we have the 6.5 right here. Now that means we can be able to chain something like this, we can be able to escape the PHP here, open the PHP again, and we can introduce HTML in this particular location. So for example, I can add what we call checkboxes, for example. So the first thing here that we'll need to do is add a label, so we'll open our tags, add a label, and that label has a for statement, which is equal to something, and that's usually the name of the input that we have here, so I'm going to say input, I'm going to put an input, it will have a name, and then it will have a value, it will have an ID, and then of course it will have the type of checkbox. So I'll say checkbox here, and close this off. So the one thing that we want to put here is the variable attribute, so we can copy this variable attribute and then put it in PHP tags here, PHP echo, variation attribute, I'll copy this here, paste it here, add it as a value, add it as a type, and then I'm going to save this, let's come back and reload and see what happens on the front end, I'll reload this, come back to pizza, click the plus sign, and you're going to see that we have these different checkboxes, showing up here. Now the reason why they don't have anything is because I forgot to add the closing of the label, and inside that label I should have put that variable attribute showing up here, so save that, reload, pizza, click this, and we have this as an array. Now we need to remember that this variation attribute was actually an object, so I'm going to verdump this, I'll come back to our front end, reload, come to pizza, click this, and you'll see that we have the attribute sizes and the attribute accompaniment. So we need to copy this and copy the accompaniments. And what that is going to help us to do is we can be able to get a full name. For example, I can say the full name of the product is going to equal to the attribute sizes, I'll also copy this accompaniment, paste it here, and what I'm going to do is get the variation attribute object, pass it in here, and say what I want to do is get this attribute sizes, and I'm going to chain onto it the variation attribute, and then of course that is part of the array, I need to put that in brackets, and in here I can put some space, put a dot, and then put two with a space, and that would be the full name, so I can get this full name, copy it from here, and then I can use it to replace all these parts, replace them with full name, save this, and then of course on, the, on that I don't want to forget the price, so I'm going to get the variation price, copy it from here, and then just attach it to the name, so I'll do the same thing, paste this here, and then copy this, and put it in here, save, of course add a semicolon here, save, and then come back to the front end, reload here on the front end, go to our pizza, click the plus sign, and now you'll see that we have pepperoni, it has the price of that, and, it, and we have our small labels showing up here. So we can add small uh, divs to allow that to break out, say breakpoint of that, reload this and click this, so we have 
someone clicking on this and getting whether they need to do this. Now remember we wanted someone to be able to just choose whether they want a pepperoni or whatever it is, we want them to be able to choose. The more orders they make that's okay for us, that's what we need to have. So we have this small pepperoni, small olives, we have extra cheese, we have all of this. Now if I want to be able to allow all the different things that we do have here, if we want to get all we just need to take out this default value is equal to the attribute variation, I'll just close this out for now, save it, come back to our front end, let's reload what we have here, I'll go to the pizza, click on this, now you see that we have all the different items showing up here, someone can be able to choose this and then they have the pricing. Now I know this looks a little bit warped, so what we can do is we can change the input to come before the label. Now of course we would like to add the currency symbol here and then also move these checkboxes to the beginning here. So I'm going to come back to our HTML and the thing that we need to do first is to get this input above the label. So we'll get our label here, cut it, put it before the break tag, we'll save after rearranging, come back to the front end, reload this, you'll see that we have this showing the way we want it to show, of course the pricing is not yet with the symbol, and what we need to do there is just come back right here where we have the global product, we're going to check also for the global WooCommerce, and once we have that global WooCommerce showing up there, we can be able to use one function of WooCommerce and that is the function which is called get WooCommerce currency symbol and we can access that there and we're just going to chain it on here, I'll save that, come back reload, go to pizza, click on this, and you'll see that we have our dollar sign showing up here and we are able to choose any one of these items here and then we are able to add them to our cart. This video has really gotten so long, so in the next video I'm going to show you how you can actually add this. After selecting this then you'll click the add to button and that will send your items to the mini cart. So thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, Oh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're getting value for your time. Thank you and enjoy your day.